Okay, so today we are moving on to observational studies and experiments. So our first definition is an observational study. What do you think this is? What does it mean to observe something? Yeah, so like an observational study could be like, Let's say I wanted to see how many people brought umbrellas to school today, so I stood in the parking lot and I counted the number of people with umbrellas. I'm just there watching, not actually interacting. Okay, so a response variable. Guys, a response variable is measuring the outcome of a study. So if my study was to see if rain causes people to bring umbrellas to school the next day, my response variable would be how many people actually brought umbrellas to school. Okay, so an explanatory variable helps explain or predict the changes in a response variable. Going back to my umbrellas at school, the amount of rain last night could explain how many people bring an umbrella today. I feel like they only bring umbrellas when it's actually raining, too. Okay, so next one is confounding. This happens. Boys. Confounding happens when I have something that could be a result of more than one thing. And typically you'll see this in observational studies. 
So if I'm back at my trying to figure out how many people are bringing umbrellas based on last night's rain, it could actually be dependent on today's weather if they're going to bring umbrellas, right? So confounding is where it might be a result of something else. <laughs> Counting people with umbrellas? No, I mean, no, <laughs> we're just all standing on top of this. <laughs> what person with the clipboard? Uh, uh, like, you're gonna, like, you have to go find something to find the clipboard. Um, there's one I was thinking of. I don't know if, if it's better in fifth or second semester, but like, you create a survey and then you ask and analyze the results. That was something I was looking at. Huh? Okay, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so next thing is an experiment. So this is where you're actively changing something. So um, if I'm going back to my umbrella one, an experiment would be where I uh, text you guys tonight to see how many of you actually bring an umbrella tomorrow. Because I'm actively changing something. So. Bless you. I don't think I spelled this word right. Deliberately. <laughs> Here? Ah, it was actually pretty close. Okay, so the next one is placebo. You'll typically see this in an experiment with drug trials or um, where they're actively trying something that has an active ingredient. A placebo is something that doesn't have an active ingredient, but it's 
otherwise like the other treatments. So if I'm doing a drug study and I'm giving people pills, uh, it could be a pill with nothing inside. For placebo, like a drug trial, you just get an empty pill, like there's nothing inside. Yeah, so you still like you'd still get a pill, but you as like a participant, you wouldn't know there's nothing inside. It'd just be like a sugar pill or something. Okay. So what does it mean for two variables to have an association? Okay. So they affect one another? But should I, just because there's an association, should I assume that they cause and affect each other? Why not? <laughs> so we think back to my umbrellas based on last night's rain. Is that necessarily related? And if it was raining this morning, wouldn't that also affect whether people bring umbrellas? So, um, exactly. So I can have a missing variable that's affecting them both. And this particularly happens in observational studies. Okay, so 
what is the benefit to doing an experiment over conducting an observational study? Mm -hmm. You can control the variable being tested. 